All right, guys, I'm gonna try to keep my feet out of the way. So you bought a turbo. Everyone loves buying bigger turbos or buying turbos for their car, but we're gonna talk about a couple things that absolutely need to be done if you plan on installing a turbo, okay? Lots of people talk about turbos and how they wanna go fast and do this and that. Um, not a lot of people talk about what needs to be done before and during turbo installation. All right, so first things first. Obviously, you need to check your fitment, okay? The biggest thing is you need to make sure that it is the exact same flange style as your old turbo, okay? Now, this right here that you see in the image is a EcoBoost 3.5 liter, uh, one of the two turbos on it, okay? These are stage two um, gearhead turbos for the 3.5 EcoBoost platform that we're gonna be installing. So, I know these are a direct bolt-on, so fitment-wise, I'm okay. I know they're gonna work just great. Now, you got two sides, okay? You got your exhaust side, which this is exhaust out. So this is going towards the back of the car. And then you have your, oh, it'll actually balance like that. Then you have your manifold side, okay? The manifold side needs to fit, the exhaust side needs to fit, everything needs to be identical. Now, <clears throat> the other thing you need to absolutely make sure that you have, new hardware kit okay some turbos are oil uh, oil fed and they're not cooled by coolant some are oil fed and they're also cooled by coolant lines this turbo as you can see by the ports happens to be liquid cooled so that means coolant flows through it as well but one thing that guys often overlook is the turbo prep. They bolt them on the car, they turn the engine over, and they let it buck. And that's not the proper way to do it. So absolutely, first thing first, make sure you're in a clean environment. Make sure there's no debris that fell into either side of the turbo. Make sure there's no dirt or grime. Make sure it is spotless, okay? Secondly, something that absolutely needs to be done, absolutely they need to be pre-lubed, okay? Now you can choose either, either oil side, it really doesn't matter. But what you need to do, that's why I got this out, you need to take your oil squirter and you need to load that thing up with oil and spin the compressor side or the exhaust side if you can get to it spin it around and make sure it's well lubricated before it goes on the car. Next, okay, the lines that feed your, your oil side, okay? The coolant side, not as relevant, but the lines that feed, so you this side right here, if you guys can see that, this is your dump side, okay? Usually these sit in a downward position and oil, when it flows through, it goes right back into the oil pan for scavenging. And on this side, okay, that is your main oil feed. I wanna make sure you guys can see that. That is your oil feed, okay? Now the feed line, you need to absolutely make sure it's clean and not full of any debris or contaminants that could push their way into the turbo housing, therefore lodging and therefore causing catastrophic damage um, to the, I don't want to say bearings because they don't ride on bearings. They ride with oil in between the shaft and they float on the oil. However, if you have debris that gets forced into the turbo, no bueno. You're probably going to lose the turbo pretty quick. You're going to end up with tons of shaft play. Uh, a lot of you guys do these turbo tests where you, you know, you wiggle the shaft and you see how much play there is. Okay, yeah, that is a good 
um, evaluation of the usage or the life or the abuse that the turbos had um, but most of that is not caused by the turbo being bad or having poor craftsmanship most of it is caused by lack of lubrication debris that gets forced into the turbo via the oil lines etc so <clears throat> this is a uh, part of the video that I'm making on the five to 600 horsepower wheel, I should say wheel horsepower torque show that we're building, which is right next to you, just out of sight, you can't see. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this. This is actually gonna be a separate video as well, just for those of you guys that are doing turbo builds. And uh, we're gonna get right into it. So I'm gonna switch the camera angle here so that you guys can see what we're working on. All right, so we are going to dive right into it, guys, and here's what we're going to do, okay? The first step in this equation, and I've already cleaned the bottom side. You can't see it on the camera here, but bottom side is clean. You got to make sure that's all nice and, and prepped, nice prepped surface, okay? And then what I'm going to do is uh, I got a gasket here. That is a crush gasket. I believe it's a MLS multi-layer steel. We'll double check that in a minute here. I don't even know how they got this in that bag, but all right. So um, on these EcoBoosts, you have a longer run side. They can only fit on one way. So you gotta pay attention to that, okay? So the easiest way to do it, just like I just did, is to set it on the turbo itself. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is, um, not all of these gaskets will grab onto the manifold. Uh, some of them will. This design actually is made so it'll hold, it'll rest on the actual manifold, which is very, very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this gasket, okay? And you got to make sure you got the fitment correct as well. But I'm going to place this gasket on the manifold, okay? So gasket on manifold. Now we're not gonna just go for the hills and install it right out of the gate. What we're gonna do is we're going to test fit and make sure everything lines up and everything's good. This turbo actually has some weight to it, so it's a little bit harder to hold than you can imagine. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anchor the turbo to the manifold. Okay, just like such. Okay, we got our exhaust side coming out. We've got two bolts holding it into place. Okay, now we gotta find our dump, which is down here. Might not be very visible on the camera, but I gotta make sure that lines up, which, It does, okay. Now the oil drain or the oil dump, which is on the bottom side of the turbo, and I think you can see that flange, yep, you can see that flange in your sight there. That has a gasket typically, something like this, okay. So that has to go on there before it gets bolted on, okay. That's something important to keep in mind. Now, the other important thing is, again, making sure that our feed line is nice and clean, okay? So these two lines here are not necessarily feeds, and they're actually switched around. There we go. So this is my upper coolant line coming in. This is my lower coolant line coming in, which is, there's a binding on it. There we go. Okay. So those get mounted just like that. 
Now our oil feed line, which is a different story. Our oil feed line currently is still attached to the old turbo, which I'm gonna show you here. Okay, so here's the old turbo. Here's the old feed line. As you can tell, this thing looks rough, like really rough, okay? So we're gonna knock this bolt off. We do have a new bolt for it, thankfully, that came in the kit, which I will show you right here. So we got a new bolt, just kind of a banjo style. And the most important part is this guy right here, okay? Now this gets put on the feed line and it gets crushed down like copper washers do on a drain plug, okay? It absolutely has to be replaced. The worst thing you can have is oil spraying onto a 800 plus degree turbo, okay? Not, not good. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull this line off. We're gonna move some stuff around. The other thing to be uh, cautious about is the heat shielding, okay? Now, most turbo setups are gonna have some kind of heat shield design. Uh, obviously, this has an electronic rack and pinion. We gotta keep heat away. Well, there is a heat shield that is specifically designed to fit right here, okay? And that's to shield the heat from coming back this way onto the electronic uh, power steering gearbox. So. Like I said, we're not installing it quite yet. Uh, we're, we're test fitting it, okay? Now the other thing, you need to make sure your vacuum line, so like I drop this down here, right? Well, our vacuum reference, I say vacuum, but vacuum slash boost. Wastegate reference is clocked at a completely different angle, okay? So oftentimes you're gonna have to run some kind of custom hose or you're gonna have to alter the existing hose to make sure that it'll work for your application. Now on this side, it's very relatively simple. The exhaust, the downpipe, cat, whatever it is, bolts up right on this side. Obviously you wanna get a new gasket as well. But don't forget the most important part, which is pre-lubricating the turbo. The coolant, you don't got to worry about. The feed line, which is right under the manifold here, absolutely. You need to put oil in it. You need to spin the turbo around a bunch of times. Get it all nice and lubed up. Yes, they come lubricated from the factory, okay? How much of that lubrication you think is still in there after shipping and this and that and etc. And not only that, your line most likely, your feed line, is going to be empty when you start the vehicle. Okay, when you start the vehicle and the engine starts to turn over and compression starts to happen, the oil pressure is not immediate. It takes a second. I shouldn't say a second. Sometimes it takes five seconds, sometimes ten seconds to build maximum oil pressure enough to pressurize and feed the turbo. Well, you don't want the turbo sitting there loading up with no oil in there, just walking back and forth, not a good deal. So the point I'm trying to make is make sure that you check all your, all your pre-checks on turbo installation before you bolt it up and start the vehicle. So beyond that, I got to start pulling the feed line off the old turbo and I'm going to clean that up and then we are going to uh, bolt this one up. We're going to move around to the front and we're going to install that turbo as well. So guys, if you have a parts washer, that's how you flush the feed line. If you don't have a parts washer, you rig something up very similar to that ahead and pull this off then we're going to take some abrasive paper sandpaper um, we're gonna clean up the flange so that it's not so rusty looking even though the area where it seats is pretty clean but we're gonna clean this up we're gonna reflush it and then we're gonna install it on the turbo